afternoon. Welcome back to the Troy Savings Bank Music Hall. My name is Stacy Bridge. I'm the Associate Director. Thank you all so much for coming out today. And to those of you joining us online, thank you. Um, I would also like to thank all of our members and our donors and sponsors and our volunteers and our board of directors and our staff and friends and family and the community for all of your support over the past 18 months. We are truly, truly grateful and just so happy to be back. I would also like to thank some of the sponsors who made today's show possible. Uh, thank you to the Times Union, Fagan Associates, CDTA, SEFQ, Stewart Shops, the McCarthy Charities, the Troy Savings Bank Charitable Foundation, and of course NISCA, the New York State Council on the Arts. Be sure to visit our website, troymusichall.org, to learn about all of the wonderful shows we've got coming up. Uh, we have some fantastic shows in the next two weeks. The Albany Symphony will be here this weekend uh, performing two concerts of Brahms' first uh, concerto. Next week, we've got The Lone Bellow and Pat Metheny. And in December, we have a host of Christmas shows. So be sure to check out our website for more information about how you can get tickets. Thank you to you all for being here today, for your patience with getting into the building, and for wearing your masks over your nose and mouth during the performance. We greatly appreciate it, and we hope that you enjoy the concert today by Carl Gutowski and friends. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. It's, uh, it's a real treat for us to be here. Honored to play in this uh, legendary hall. Uh, that first piece was by Francois Gossick, uh, his tambourine. It's supposed to sound like a tambourine. That was the hitting on the strings there that uh, David was doing. And uh, we're going to go now into a piece by Villalobos, uh, his Bacchianas Brasiliaris number five. And uh, this is a work that uh, typically is sung soprano would sing this and uh, with cellos, or, uh, but uh, I don't, I'm not a soprano, I don't sing, and we don't have a cello. So this is the flute and guitar version 
Um, and it's uh, not written in the style of Bach, but certainly inspired by Bach. And uh, um, uh, Villalobos wrote a number of these uh, Brazilians, and this is number five.
The next is by uh, Mauro Giuliani, and he was uh, a great fan of Rossini, sort of living in the time of, you know, sort of the golden age of the classical period, um, uh, more or less friends to Beethoven. And, uh, but so enamored of Rossini, he wrote several sets of what he called Rossini ads, and they were essentially little operas for the guitar, including an overture, which have, would have little samples of the themes that were coming up. And then, of course, went into um, a whole sequence of arias, etc. But it was all for the solo guitar. Some of them were more successful than others. And uh, one of my favorite pieces to play by him is the uh, grand solo, which is a just essentially a great Rossini overture, but with original material. Uh, very fun to play. Um, but he wrote this wonderful uh, sonata for uh, flute and guitar, amongst other uh, smaller pieces for uh, the the duo. And this is the first movement, or the allegro, from uh, that suite. Thank you. 
two pieces uh, for our solo instruments. Um, one way of dealing with no intermission is we need a break, so he takes a break while I play, and then I'll take a break and he can play. So uh, we'll play two uh, pieces from the Baroque era. The first I'll play is uh, by Telemann, and then David will play a, a work by Bach. And Telemann and Bach were actually uh, uh, good friends during their lifetime and uh, got along very well. In fact, Bach's son, C.P.E. Bach, took over Telemann's position after Telemann passed away. And um, this work uh, is one of, I think, 3,000 works that Telemann wrote. He's probably the most prolific composer uh, in the history of music. And uh, he wrote a collection of works for solo flute called his 12 Fantasies. And this is one of those fantasies. It's fantasy number five in C major by Telemann.
Thank you. Just a, a quick word about this uh, solo for guitar. Is the prelude from the first cello suite. Uh, the cello suite uh, number one was in G major. You'll see me tune my six string down to a D, so I can. And we actually played in D major, but it's wonderful material for the guitar. Um, we're tuned slightly different. Our range is slightly different, but um, I, I think you'll see it almost sounds if it was made for the instrument. So next we're going to uh, jump ahead a couple hundred years and uh, play a work by the French composer uh, Jacques Hibert. It's titled Entract. And whenever I hear this piece, I, I think of Ravel's Bolero, uh, this French composer writing in a Spanish style. Uh, this is very Spanish sounding, this piece. Uh, but it's not quite on the scale of Bolero. Uh, but it's got that same kind of feel to it. Uh, so I hope you enjoy uh, Hibert's Entract.
Um, the next piece is a milonga from Argentina by Tavalaro. Um, and the, the milonga has the same, same uh, rhythms as the, the tango, which if you know your 4-4 four, four time, you get a, a strong beat on one, a, so, a strong beat on the second half of the second beat, and then you get a strong beat on the fourth beat as well. So it's exactly the same um, in terms of rhythm. However, typically the milonga is a little faster. It's associated with being more of a folk dance than the stylized tango that we see on, in ballroom dance, dancing. And there are perhaps some other subtle differences. Um, it's hard for me not to feel a tango when I'm playing it. So um, anyway, there's, there's, there's more to dig into there. But uh, this is the milonga number five by Fernando Carlos Tavolaro.
The next one is by Brazilian composer Celso Machado, who is still uh, flourishing today. Uh, however, he's not in Brazil. He went, he went way north. He went to Vancouver, uh, Canada, Canada. And um, uh, is just a really animated, fun human being uh, that just loves writing in this, particularly the Choros form, which is a really fun, popular, almost reminds me of sort of a ragtime meets uh, a bluegrass kind of form with a Brazilian twist. And uh, so we're gonna do one of the choros, but then we're gonna do uh, something that might be more familiar to, to you, uh, the samba form or the bossa nova. And so we'll do a pair by uh, Machado Pachoca and uh, samba lamento, isn't it? Yeah, yes. okay, thanks very much.
And now I'll be a little bit closer to home, uh, a couple of traditional pieces. Uh, this is actually a combination of Shenandoah and The Water is Wide. Uh, my first flute teacher, Tacey Edwards of the Hudson Valley Philharmonic, has a CD of flute and guitar music. And there's a beautiful version of The Water is Wide on there. And so I went looking for a score for that. And uh, I got two for one, Shenandoah and The Water is Wide. Uh, this is arranged by Henry Wadsworth.
Well, we have a final piece here and I uh, just wanted to take a minute to thank so much for you coming out today in the middle of the day. What a, what a fantastic thing to do on a Tuesday in November. And uh, we're really enjoying ourselves playing here. It's a real honor. And uh, just a big thanks to everybody at the uh, Troy Savings Bank Music Hall. Um, and a big thanks to Carl here for really putting, putting it together for me amidst the, the um, craziness of life <laughs> and uh, really enjoying this. Uh, um, and thanks to my wife for getting me here. <laughs> and uh, anyway, this last piece uh, that we're really grateful to be able to play for you is the first movement from a sonatina by a man named Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco. Uh, that's quite a mouthful. He is a wonderful uh, Italian composer, wrote for films, and then he met uh, Andre Segovia, the great guitarist. And uh, it was a really strong musical connection between the two for the rest of Segovia's life. And um, he wrote a lot of pieces for uh, uh, Segovia without knowing really anything about the guitar. But he just didn't know the guitar could be a concert instrument and was fascinated with it and wrote some really, really smart things. And um, usually Segovia would make sense of the scores to try to make it really work, make it more adaptable. But nonetheless, this is a wonderful uh, uh, three movement work by uh, Tedesco and we're gonna play the first movement, the uh, Allegretto Grazioso. And let me also say thank you on Go ago, I had the great honor of playing down at Carnegie Hall, and now here, two weeks later, at Troy Music Hall, is every musician's dream to play in these places. Uh, this is just such a wonderful space. It really is. Yes.